QTake provides uh, H two channels of HD SDI recording for uh, HD video assist and playback on set. It's advanced video assist. It has more features than uh, any other video assist system we've ever used. It has the ability to do real-time green screen keys on set, blending, mixes, wipes, as well as stereoscopic output. So you can, you can record two feeds in full res of stereo, right eye, left eye, and output stereoscopic output, industry standard, line by line, side by side, or DLP mux out to set monitors in 3D or you can output uh, in 2D, uh, two channels of, of 2D output. So uh, the system is set up in, there's four rooms. There's a file room where you set up your project and all the specifications of it. There's the shoot room where you record and playback material. And then there is the uh, edit room where you can edit clips together and the composite room where you can mix things together and output in 3D. Right now, I'm going to start in the in the file room and just set up my project to uh, to be able to connect with the footage that I'm inputting here. And I'm just going to set my my footage real quickly here. And I need to requeue this disc. And and so I'm going to play back this clip here. And so for Basic video assist, we can record the system, record, and if this was connected to a RED camera, it can auto start stop from the RED camera over the SDI line. It takes the information over the SDI line. The other really important feature that it has for RED camera is it records the R3D file name. So if I was connected to a RED camera right now, the R3D file name would be coming over the SDI line. And also in the project window, there is the ability to set a reverse pull down. Reverse pull down, for example, back to 2398. So you have the exact matching frames that are recorded on the red mag are recorded here. So we auto start stop, we do a reverse pull, pull down, and we match the file name, which means we have ready to edit media that can go right from here into post for Final Cut Pro editing. On ProRes 422, you're, you've got your dailies, you're ready to go, sunk up with audio. No transcoding, saves a lot of time if you're going to post in, in Final Cut. Uh, so um, the recording can be start, started and stopped here. The, each, uh, there's a lot of metadata available for each scene. You can add in scene number, shot number, take number, rating. Also, there's additional information in notes that can be made. Uh, the camera number, the, the lens, the f-stop, shutter speed, uh, the shot, what type of shot it is, the angle. Uh, so there's a lot of metadata that can be entered into the system. And that is preserved with the file. Also, there's a PDF report that can come out at the end of the day that shows all the files, their R3D file name, the type of shot they are. So there's just a lot of metadata that goes along with this. Now, I'm going to bring in some 3D footage here. and. I'm going to go back to my project window and I'm going to change it to accept the type of input that's coming into it now, which is 3D. Right now I'm showing an input muxed 3D. And so what this means is you can take right eye, left eye and go into one channel of the two Kona cards here and have right eye, left eye here. And then you could, of course, if you had another stereo camera, you'd have right eye, left eye over here. So this recording muxed 3D and it's outputting 3D to the set monitor in real time. If this was a 3D monitor, it would take these two sides, blend them together, and with your 3D glasses, this would be this would be outputting perfect 3D. We just don't have a 3D monitor for the demo, but that is 3D that you're seeing coming out of the system right now. Um, <clears throat> the system also has the ability to edit, so you can you can quickly uh, put a series of clips together and it has this 3D playback capability. So if you have a 3D monitor, once you've done a little edit, you can play back and it'll, it'll automatically sync the, the you, you edit the left eye and it'll automatically pull up all the right eye clips and sync them together. So you can have 3D playback on the screen uh, from a, a little cut in real time. The other function if, of this um, is that it has the ability to mix the output. So it has the ability, sorry, it has the ability to sync two cameras. This slow motion footage was shot 
on a red cam or on a phantom camera. And so the two outputs come in at different times, the right eye and the left eye. This has the ability to, to set an offset between these two cameras and put them back in sync. This is the only way to do 3D playback off the phantom camera and, and be able to see it live on set at, right after you've shot it in, in slow motion. So if this was outputting, for example, in, in uh, 3D, I'll put, I'll put the output, set the output here to uh, anaglyph. So on the phantom camera, if you're using two phantoms, they're going to be... It's going to be out of sync. If you if you if you use three two phantom cameras, you can record them in real time in sync. But to play them back with slow motion, they have no way to start their two cameras simultaneously. I see. So the only way to get them back in sync to, is to use the offset feature of QTape, which which gives us the ability. For example, I'll just take this clip right here, and I'll show you that if if I turn the clip, the play sync off here and I move one clip relative to the other clip, that's how it would be coming out of the Phantom. They'd be coming out at different times. What I have to do is I have to move it back in, find the exact matching frame, and hit play sync, and now they're now it's playing together in exact perfect sync, which you have to have exact sync for it to look 3D on a 3D monitor. So this is the only way on a Phantom camera to actually play back 3D slow motion. Um, additionally, we have... Uh, an amazing key keying capability and real-time effects. And I'm going to just bring up some footage right now um, from a special effects project that I worked on where we had uh, we had some something that we needed to output to the screen in real time. So I've got an actor on a green screen and I need to key that over the, the hallway here. So what I did on set was I played back this footage, and when I was playing back the footage, the uh, output was going to the screen, the, to the monitor in real time. And so as I played this back, uh, as I played back the, uh, oh wait a minute, I'm not in play sync here, one second. So as I'm playing back this footage, when the actor walks up and cuts the tape is when they wanted to, to move the dolly. So they were, they were doing their, the timing of, their, of the move off of when he cut the tape, cut and dolly. So they're able to do their, their timing so they would all work in editorial perfectly by having real-time green screen uh, capability on set. And that can, that, that's true not only for green screen, but of course there's blue screen. You can do wipes, blends, composites, and, uh, and stereoscopic. And you can also render these. So if I want to take a piece that I built like this and add it into another element of the, of the, of the edit, I just hit the render button and it will render out that scene. Uh, it will render out, if I do a render, it, it, it does it relatively quick. It gives me the ability to select my quality. Right now I've got Apple ProRes and I hit that and it renders. And uh, that rendered output is then available in my browsing list to look at. There are three ways to access clips in, in QuickBooks. You can, uh, QTake, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's three ways to access clips. You can just go back and forth uh, using the up and down arrows to, to find the most recent clip. You can open up a list and scroll through that list and find a clip, or you can open up the browser. Within the browser, you have the ability to search for clips, sort clips, uh, have reference for clips, and that sort of thing.